Life does not care whether you call yourself rich or poor, strong or weak. It will eternally reward you with that which you claim is true of yourself. The measurements of right and wrong belong to man alone. To life, there is nothing right or wrong. As Paul stated in his letters to the Romans, I know and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. Stop asking yourself whether you are worthy or unworthy to receive that which you desire. You, as man, did not create the desire. Your desires are ever fashioned within you because of what you now claim yourself to be. When a man is hungry, without thinking, he automatically desires food. When imprisoned, he automatically desires freedom and so forth. Your desires contain within themselves the plan of self-expression. So leave all judgments out of the picture and rise in consciousness to the level of your desire and make yourself one with it by claiming it to be so now. For, my grace is sufficient for thee, my strength is made perfect in weakness. Have faith in this unseen claim until the conviction is born within you that it is so. Your confidence in this claim will pay great rewards. Just a little while and he, the thing desired, will come. But without faith it is impossible to realize anything. Through faith the worlds were framed because faith is the substance of the thing hoped for, the evidence of the thing not yet seen. Don't be anxious or concerned as to results. They will follow just as surely as day follows night. Look upon your desires, all of them, as the spoken words of God, and every word or desire a promise. The reason most of us fail to realize our desires is because we are constantly conditioning them. Do not condition your desire. Just accept it as it comes to you. Give thanks for it to the point that you are grateful for having already received it. Then go about your way in peace. Such acceptance of your desire is like dropping seed, fertile seed, into prepared soil. For when you can drop the thing desired in consciousness, confident that it shall appear, you have done all that is expected to you. But to be worried or concerned about the how of your desire maturing is to hold these fertile seeds in a mental grasp, and therefore, never to have dropped them in the soil of confidence. The reason men condition their desires is because they constantly judge after the appearance of being and see the things as real, forgetting that the only reality is the consciousness backing them. To see things as real is to deny that all things are possible to God. The man who is imprisoned and sees his four walls as real is automatically denying the urge or promise of God within him of freedom. A question often asked when this statement is made is, if one's desire is a gift of God, how can you say that if one desires to kill a man that such a desire is good, and therefore God sent? In answer to this, let me say that no man desires to kill another. What he does desire is to be freed from such a one. But because he does not believe that the desire to be free from such a one contains within itself the powers of freedom, he conditions that desire and sees the only way to express such freedom is to destroy the man forgetting that the life wrapped within the desire has ways that he, as man, knows not of. Its ways are past finding out. Thus man distorts the gifts of God through his lack of faith. Problems are the mountains spoken of that can be removed if one has but the faith of a grain of a mustard seed. Men approach their problem as did the old lady who on attending service heard the priest say, If you had but the faith of a grain of a mustard seed, you would say unto yonder mountain be thou removed and it shall be removed, and nothing is impossible to you. That night as she said her prayers, she quoted this part of the scriptures, and retired to bed in what she thought was faith. On arising in the morning, she rushed to the window and exclaimed, I knew that old mountain would still be there. For this is how man approaches his problem. He knows that they are still going to confront him, and because life is no respecter of persons and destroys nothing, it continues to keep alive that which he is conscious of being. Things will disappear only as man changes in consciousness. Deny it if you will. It still remains a fact that consciousness is the only reality, and things but mirror that which you are in consciousness. So the heavenly state you are seeking will be found only in consciousness, for the kingdom of heaven is within you. As the will of heaven is ever done on earth, you are today living in the heaven that you have established within you. For here on this very earth, your heaven reveals itself. The kingdom of heaven really is at hand. Now is the accepted time. 
So create a new heaven, enter into a new state of consciousness, and a new earth will appear. The former things shall pass away. They shall not be remembered, not come into mind anymore. For behold, I, your consciousness, come quickly, and my reward is with me. I am nameless, but will take upon myself every name, nature, that you call me. Remember it is you, yourself, that I speak of as me. So every conception that you have of yourself, that is every deep conviction you have of yourself, is that which you shall appear as being, for I am not fooled, God is not mocked. Now let me instruct you in the art of fishing. It is recorded that the disciples fished all night and caught nothing. Then Jesus came upon the scene and told them to cast their nets in once more into the same waters that only a moment before were barren, and this time their nets were bursting with the catch. This story is taking place in the world today, right within you, the reader. For you have within you all the elements necessary to go fishing. But until you find that Jesus Christ, your awareness, is Lord, you will fish, as did these disciples, in the night of human darkness. That is, you will fish for things, thinking things to be real, and will fish with the human bait which is a struggle and an effort, trying to make contact with this one and that one, trying to coerce this being or the other being, and all such effort will be in vain. But when you discover your awareness of being to be Christ Jesus, you will let him direct your fishing, and you will fish in consciousness for the things that you desire. For your desire will be the fish that you will catch. Because your consciousness is the only living reality, you will fish in the deep waters of consciousness. If you would catch that which is beyond your present capacity, you must launch out into deeper waters, for within your present consciousness such fish or desires cannot swim. To launch out into deeper waters, you leave behind you all that is now your present problem or limitation by taking your attention away from it. Turn your back completely upon every problem and limitation that you now possess. Dwell upon just being by saying, I am, I am, I am, to yourself. Continue to declare to yourself that you just are. Do not condition this declaration. Just continue to feel yourself to be, and without warning you will find yourself slipping the anchor that tied you to the shallow of your problems and moving out into the deep. This is usually accompanied with the feeling of expansion. You will feel yourself expand as though you were actually growing. Don't be afraid, for courage is necessary. You are not going to die to anything by your former limitations, but they are going to die as you move away from them, for they live only in your consciousness. In this deep or expanded consciousness, you will find yourself to be a power that you had never dreamt of before. The things desired before you shoved off from the shores of limitation are the fish you are going to catch in this deep. Because you have lost all consciousness of your problems and barriers, it is now the easiest thing in the world to feel yourself to be one with the things desired. Because I am, your consciousness, is the resurrection and the life, you must attach this resurrecting power that you are to the thing desired, if you would make it appear and live in your world. Now you begin to assume the nature of the thing desired by feeling, I am wealthy, I am free, I am strong. When these feels are fixed within yourself, your formless being will take upon itself the forms of the things felt. You become crucified upon the feelings of wealth, freedom, and strength. Remain buried in the stillness of these convictions. Then, as a thief in the night and when you least expect it, these qualities will be resurrected in your world as living realities. The world shall touch you and see that you are flesh and blood for you shall begin to bear fruit of the nature of these qualities newly appropriated. This is the art of successful fishing for the manifestations of life. Successful realization of the thing desired is also told us in the story of Daniel in the lion's den. Here it is recorded that Daniel, while in the lion's den, turned his back upon the lions and looked towards the light coming from above, that the lions remained powerless, and Daniel's faith in his God saved him. This also is your story, and you too must do as Daniel did. If you found yourself in a lion's den, you would have no other concern but lions. You would not be thinking of one thing in the world but your problem, which problem would be lions. Yet you are told that Daniel turned his back upon them and looked towards the light that was his God. If we would follow the example of Daniel, we would, 
while imprisoned within the den of poverty of sickness, take our attention away from our problems of debts or sickness and dwell upon the thing we seek. If we do not look back in consciousness to our problems but continue in faith, believing ourselves to be that which we seek, we too will find our prison walls open and the things sought, yes, whatsoever things, realized. Another story is told us of the widow and the three drops of oil. The prophet asked the widow, What have ye in your house? And she replied, Three drops of oil. He then said to her, Go borrow vessels, close the door after ye have returned into your house and begin to pour. And she poured from three drops of oil into all the borrowed vessels, filling them to capacity with oil remaining. You, the reader, are this widow. You have not a husband to impregnate you or make you fruitful, for a widow is a barren state. Your awareness is now the Lord, or the prophet that has become your husband. Follow the example of the widow, who instead of recognizing an emptiness or nothingness, recognized the something, three drops of oil. Then the command to her, go within and close the door. That is, shut the door of the senses that tell you of the empty measures, the debts, the problems. When you have taken your attention away completely by shutting out the evidence of the senses, begin to feel the joy, symbolized by oil, of having received the things desired. When the agreement is established within you so that all doubts and fears have passed away, then you too will fill all the empty measures of your life and have an abundance running over. Recognition is the power that conjures in the world. Every state that you have ever recognized, you have embodied. That which you are recognizing as true of yourself today is that which you are experiencing. So be as the widow and recognize joy, no matter how little the beginnings of recognition, and you will be generously rewarded. For the world is a magnified mirror, magnifying everything that you are conscious of being. I am the Lord the God, which has brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. What a glorious revelation, your awareness now revealed as the Lord thy God. Come, awake from your dream of being imprisoned. Realize that the earth is yours, and the fullness thereof, the world, and all that dwells therein. You have become so enmeshed in the belief that you are man that you have forgotten the glorious being that you are. Now with your memory restored, decree the unseen to appear, and it shall appear, for all things are compelled to respond to the voice of God, your awareness of being. The world is at your command.